I decided to try growing tomatillos as I usually grow tomatoes with the plate germination method. So in early spring I spread a few tomatillo seeds over a plate with a wet paper napkin and enclosed everything in a recycled Ziploc bag, putting in a warm place for them to germinate. This is the first time I'm growing tomatillos, but they're the same family as tomatoes and peppers, so I'm using the same method. I pre sprouted the seeds in a plate method, and now I'm transplanting them to cups to later on, when they grow up, transplant them into the garden. I had always been curious about these fruits. Like tomatoes, they are treated as a vegetable. I had seen them occasionally in supermarkets, but had not ventured using them regularly. I had tried them a few times, but they seemed lackluster. It's been about a month, and the tomatillos have grown well, and it's time to transplant them into their definitive home. I already have a place in mind. I hope it's going to be the right place for them. Maybe if I grew them, they would be tastier, much like homegrown tomatoes. Frankly, I don't really usually grow tomatillos, so this is sort of new. But because they're very much related to tomatoes, I would imagine that their needs would be similar. So they do need a lot of sun. And as you know, that's kind of scarce in my garden. However, I have already prepared this bed here and left it mulched, ready to accept them. These plant starts did look promising. For me, they resembled a bit the structure of pepper plants, but with more tender leaves. That does make sense, since peppers are also part of the Solanacea family, which includes tomatoes, eggplants, and potatoes. Tomatillos were the lesser known in this family, at least in the United States. They are widely used in Mexico and other Latin American countries, but I don't think they are much used in Brazil. Growing up in Brazil, I don't remember ever seeing this fruit there. Spring arrives without fanfare, summer sneaks a passing glare, autumn leaves without a we did have a different, unusual family member of the Solanacea family there, Gilo, a small, bitter eggplant that is an acquired taste. But one thing is true, many members of this family pack a punch, flavor-wise, so I was expecting these to deliver on that promise. This is actually the perfect stage to transplant a seedling. You see that the roots are just starting to want to get root-bound, and it holds itself together in a clump so you know you use the container to the best of its um, potential so that it's not a huge container for a small plant or a small container for a plant that wants to grow more. So now really was the stage to start to plant them. That does make a difference. If you end up buying your starts, make sure they are not too old and root bound as they can cause the plant to go through shock, diminishing production. So it is a good idea to check a plant's root system before buying them. A few weeks later, the tomatillo looked promising, as they were establishing themselves to their new place without a hiccup. That was most likely due to the stage I had transplanted them in. Flea beetles were taking bites out of the leaves, giving them a lacework appearance, or more precisely, the look of Swiss cheese slices. I usually don't fret about the damage flea beetles do to my plants. They love eggplants and apparently tomatillos and can set the plants back a bit, but they usually don't completely destroy the plant and at least in my case seem to vanish after a few weeks, so I normally don't do much about their presence. I believe neem oil spray could be an effective organic way of controlling this pest if you see that they are causing too much harm. We're in the last third of June, and these tomatillos have been growing crazily. They are setting a lot of fruit, and I'm not sure if plants, for some reason, they, they grow very fast around June here, and I think that it might be because we reached the summer solstice, and they have a lot of sunlight to capture a lot of energy. So that's, that's why it also coincides that we have a lot of rain, so <laughs> that those are perfect conditions for plants to grow fast. They're setting up all these little lantern-like um, fruit and from what I understand they'll they'll grow inside the, the actual hard fruit that's that you can feel here They're, it's gonna grow inside and become sort of the size of a, a small tomato and that's when they can be harvested 
but I'm impressed. I had interplanted some zinnias to serve as companions to my tomatillos and hopefully boost pollination. Would I get a decent tomatillo harvest or would my luck run out? You will find out in the next block right after this commercial. If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. Summer came bearing gifts. The tomatillo plants were loving the heat and humidity that Maryland is known for. They were setting a profusion of blooms orchestrated by the rhythmic downpours of afternoon thunderstorms. They hung paper lanterns across their limbs, as if decorating themselves for nature's silent vernal holiday, known only to those who devote time to observe it. I've been away from the garden for about a week, and upon returning, I'm just amazed at the amount of growth an explosion of blooms. It's the time of the year when the garden really shines and the harvest starts to pump out things. Now, we had a lot of sun and no rain for a while before I left. And during this week, it rained a lot. Some things actually didn't survive the wind and the thunderstorms. But I think there might be a lot of things to harvest. I already, yesterday during the rain, I got some a cucumber and some tomatoes to eat so there should be things we'll see I'll start taking inventory it's right in the beginning of the production the main um, harvest of the year I know that the beans are gonna be crazy but I don't know what else I might find the storms had invited mushrooms to appear throughout the garden they send their fruiting bodies to the surface to bloom and spread their spores whenever there is an abundance of rain since not all fungi are beneficial some fungal diseases also increase when it rains a lot Growing tomatillos at home made me become an instant fan of them. As I went about picking other daily treasures from my garden, such as fresh cucumbers, I started to imagine new ways of using tomatillos in recipes. The tomatillos were heavy laden as their fruit swelled within their papery husks. It is as if these culinary gifts come prepackaged in elegant wrapping paper. I finally got to taste homegrown tomatillos and I feel it is totally worth the effort. Different from grocery store ones, these fruit are flavor packed, especially when picked ripe. Tomatillo is usually picked while still green for supermarkets and that makes them taste blander. People usually make salsa verde with them and maybe they like the blander taste in savory dishes. It does gain significant sweetness as it ripens, but I think that is a positive thing. I especially like making an avocado tomatillo dip, seasoning it with salt and using the sweeter, riper, homegrown tomatillos. They have a deeply flavorful, tangy, sweet and savory profile unlike anything else. Discovering their flavor was akin to discovering a never-before-seen hue in the color wheel. As the weeks progressed and summer turned into fall, the tomatillos continued to pump out more and more fruit, making them a new favorite must-have plant in my edible garden. Such was their generosity, they continued producing until the first frost. <laughs> 